What's up, fam? Hey, thank y'all for tuning in again. As is always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Today, we want to bring up a story about, you guessed it, racism. Or is it racism? And if it's racism, why does it matter? Or if it should matter, should you be looking at it from a different angle. Now, as you know, us as black Americans have been going, dealing with racial tension since, uh, I ain't gonna say the moment we was brought over here because, you know, history shows that a lot of us were not brought over here. A lot of, you know, of us was already over here before the slave uh, trade began. <clears throat> we was just pretty much kidnapped while we living on our land and, and you know, and just putting the bondage, you know. I mean, when you look at some of the, you know, like almanacs or look at how, you know, tides, you know, you go on the, on the ocean and stuff. It's really very hard to believe that so many ships came from, you know, uh, across the seas to this country. Now, they might have said most of the people that was brought over here from Africa or what have you, was, you know, brought to the Caribbean. That's how the tide rolled, you know? The tide didn't roll to where it came, you know, to South Carolina straight from Africa or straight from Europe or whatever they try to try to make you believe or what, you know? Anyway, that's a totally different story. Like I said, we've been dealing with racial issues since the beginning, you know, as we can remember, you know, civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s. Sure, so you even go back to the early 1900s when you know, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, had certain rights and then they, you know, got rid of them. Uh, you know, promises were made that were not fulfilled, you know, due to the color of, of our skin. It's just part of history, part of the nature of the people that we're, that we're dealing with. But that being said, there are a lot of, you know, uh, there are a lot of stories you know, true life stories in history that show that we as black Americans, Aboriginal Americans, were able to survive and sustain, you know, perfectly well without having to deal with people who, let's just say it, didn't want to deal with you for whatever reason. Um, but for some reason, a lot of us felt that if we integrated and mingle, if they mingle with us, if they would just mingle with us and you know integrate with us, they would just like us, they'll see exactly who we are, how we are, and everybody will get along. And even when that integration was allowed by law, that whole second part of liking and getting along, it really didn't resonate well with a lot of them people and it still doesn't resonate well nowadays. But you know, back in the 60s, you had people who knew, who saw that. Older, wiser men who saw that and said, hey, that's just, you know, why in the heck are we trying to integrate with people who don't like us? Let's just try to, we just just say, hey, we just want the ability and the rights, you know, to get the same opportunities that you have. Don't hold us back. We can do our own thing and everybody, you know, there won't be no problems. But you have people who don't want you to do your own thing, who don't want you to prosper, and that's where your issue is. You can't change people from being racist or bigots, whether, no, no matter who they are. Just like you cannot, you may, bottom line, you just can't change the way people think, period. But what you do is you realize that this is the way life is. So now I got to figure out how to adjust my life accordingly. But that brings me to this story about this birthday party that's been in the news for the last few days to where people are accusing the water park of, of being racist and not allowing these black Americans to have a birthday party for a teenager. But let's get into the story. This is from, once again, the Daily Mail because they have a lot of details it says, father accuses Water Park of racism at the council's birthday party for his teenage son 
when 500 of his friends turned up and left staff feeling quote unquote uncomfortable. Man, who in the hell has 500 friends? Nobody. Now I know preachers, pastors who were able to name off about a thousand of his, you know, congregation. I know preachers like that. Uh, I can't remember his name years ago, but uh, Blake, you know, Reverend Doctor uh, Bishop, Blake, uh, you know, Pastor Kenneth Kenneth Blake. Back in the back in the day, Westside Baptist Church in Louisville, Texas. I remember him. I don't know where he is now, but he was a great preacher. But that cat, he could name off, you know, saying pretty much all of his congregation. But my point is, 17 years old, man, who ain't nobody? Who in the hell got 500 friends? Anyway, Chris Evans said his family was discriminated because of their race when the Summit Waves Park in Lee Summit, Missouri, canceled his son's birthday party. And let's see, talk about that. Lee Summit. Now, we all from the South know. I'm just going to guess without doing any research. And if I'm wrong, I would love for you to put it in the comments. Love for you to do it. And I would definitely retract what I said, what I'm saying. But we all know the last name Lee in the South. We know where that, where that comes from. So basically, you want to go into a party that is named after a Confederate general my fellow brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. Evan signed a $2,000 contract to host 250 people, but Fisher said the park failed to properly prepare extra security for the event. Well, I mean, dude, if you brought 500 people and you only put a contract out for uh, two, uh, 250 people, I mean, it, it just, I mean, it makes sense. They're not gonna let you in. I remember doing a uh, pop-up event, you know, a sign bill pop-up event for you know, a local uh, company here. And they wanted to have it in one spot, but with all the, I think it was, may have been, you know, enough enough room for maybe a thousand people or so. But when the sun gun hit Facebook and Instagram and all the other social media outlets, it was well like 5,000 people said it was coming. And so they was unable to uh, hold the event there and they had to like change it. Or maybe like five, it's not like 500 people was coming, and then like say two, three thousand people said it was coming. I mean, but you know, they that many, but you didn't that many people really gonna show up, but because so many people said they were gonna show up, you know, they just would not allow them to have that event there. So, I mean, it is what it is. Officials also claim a crowd of 500 people arrived for the party, accusing the family of promoting the event on social media, which was prohibited. The park offered an apology for poor communication and for quote, appalling. Uh, statements made by a lifeguard on social media following the incident. Says a father has accused the Kansas City Water Park of racism as they abruptly called off the party for his son when 500 people allegedly arrived and made staff feel uncomfortable. Uh, I didn't know it was 500 people. That's a good question. At a news conference in two, on Tuesday, Evans said his family was told this event doesn't represent Lee's Summit Waves. Lee, remember that. Again. And that his reservation was canceled because a park official was uncomfortable. A video of the heated argument with the Evans family and a park employee showed the family demanding an answer with the official not giving a clear response that she's flanked by police officers. If this was a large group of white folks, there wouldn't be a problem. A family member tells the employee who shakes her head no as the park denies the allegations. Evan says, I know you don't know us. I just want to know why you're uncomfortable with us. Lee Summit Park Parks and Recreation Department, which operates the water park, said in a statement Tuesday, issued Tuesdays, that it apologized to the Evans family because of miscommunication and misprocesses process, that led to the cancellation. The statement said its investigation found the department failed to arrange additional security for the party which Evans paid for as part of his contract. Parks officials said the family also promoted the event on social media despite the contract stating that would not happen. Park, the park department Officials said up to 500 people, and I said up to, up to 500 people showed up in the parking lot of this, for the party. 
with the park having a size capacity limit of 600. Hmm. But Evans claimed the event was canceled before the teenagers arrived and there was never anything close to 500 kids in the park and the parking lot. That's what I'm saying. I wonder how they knew it was 500 kids and just standing outside the parking lot. I mean, did they count them? They get a drone. Somebody go out there, you know, you know, pointing over them, you know, making, you know, putting them, marking them off or whatever, um, giving them rocks like Hop and Bob. I mean, how they know that? My kids were heartbroken that the party was canceled. He said, they are good kids who make good grades, have bright futures, and do not deserve to be treated like this. And that goes for all the kids at the park that day. Dude, I'm gonna tell you, there's 500 kids there. All 500 of them son guns are not A students, I'm sorry. It appears to have been canceled simply because the park staff was uncomfortable with a group of black teenagers having a pool party to enjoy the end of the summer. Evan said during Tuesday's conference. Officials said they grew worried about the event after other parents called asking about party details and safety concerns due to the size. Hmm. After several unsuccessful efforts to reach the Evans prior to their arrival, the department decided to cancel the party. According to the statement, safety pertained to the anticipated crowd size and the potential impact it may have on party guests and the staff was sole reason was the sole reason for the cancellation the statement said. Amazing. Lee Summit Mayor. Lee Summit. Is that a city? Lee Summit, that's the city? Oh man. Really? Oh man, y'all, come on. Lee Summit Mayor William Baird on Tuesday criticized the department's handling of the incident and denounced appalling statements he said a park employee made on social media. After the incident, we must intentionally embrace a culture that is welcome and inclusive, and we must continually denounce any urge or impulse to exclude, he said. The Parks Department's statement on Tuesday said his administrator apologized to the Evans family for an inappropriate and insensitive language used by staff and said appropriate actions will be taken. Probably going to get like a, what do you call that, a, uh, a teaching on, you know, sensitivity class or something. You know how they do. The department said it will review its rental processes, including communication and improved training yep, to align with the city's diversity and inclusion efforts. Man, I hate that. You know, they said the same mess about the police department. We're going to do like diversity, inclusion, you know, training and stuff like that. Dude, like I said, you cannot change somebody's feelings towards you on some freaking training. If they don't like you, they don't like you. If they racist, they racist, they bigot, they bigot, they don't like it, they don't like it. It's just period. So I mean, what you gotta do, like go to the police department. You're not gonna fix it. You're gonna have to dismantle it and recreate it with new staff. With proper training in the beginning, and you just replace what you have. That's how you create a better police department or any kind of uh, group you know, that you that needs to be corrected. The department said it would review its rental process. Okay, uh, a sincere apology is owed to the Evans family in our Lee Summits community. Lee Summits Parks and Recreation said in a statement, the LSPR strives to be a respectful and inclusive organization where all members of our community feel welcome and appreciated. Inappropriate language, social media posts, and behavior are not accepted and will not be tolerated. It's interesting how they're really talking about the the uh, the posts on the internet and not really about what happened at the park. The incident comes amid backlash against Sesame Street theme parks and Chuck E. Cheese, where black parents playing their children were snubbed by costume mascots through the race. And they're gonna get into that more and more in the story. You can read this on your own. But my thing is this here, people. When you get older and you get wiser and you see how the world is, you're gonna to need to start thinking, man, you gotta do something different. Why are we expecting something different from the status quo? Bottom line is, whether you like it or not, and I know it's a public part, so people pay their taxes to be able to you know, enjoy public facilities. I mean, it's nothing new, you know, back in the day when when black Americans weren't even allowed to swim in pools, you know, guys pouring acid in the pool when black kids was in there. 
uh, used to put bleach in the pool and ask the black kids to go swimming so they can mix the bleach around. Maybe trying to lighten their skin. I don't know. But those black, those black American kids, families and parents, you know, paid taxes too. But weren't allowed to, the kids were not allowed to enjoy the amenities over racial reasons, you know. You can say, hey, you can say people are allowed to do something, but if enough people makes it uncomfortable for you, you know, you get up and roll out, or you have them get up and roll out, tax dollars or not. We'll deal with that later. So, again, why expect something different? Now, I'm gonna say it like this, like seriously, if, if if the contract states that one is only for 200 people and they figure out that there was over 500 people oh, it's more than what they said was coming and then yeah they had a right to cancel contract from what i'm hearing is this one of these boys uh was like a social media influencer with thousands upon thousands of uh, internet followers so social media followers so if you did put it online and saying we're having a pool party and if 500 kids show up, and my thing is, if 500 kids showed up, let's just say it was 500 kids. Let's just say it was 250 kids showed up when the party, before the party started. You know, our people like to come late. So if 250 kids, 200 to 500 kids actually showed up in the beginning, you already know that another 200 to 500 kids or even more are gonna continue to trickle in. So it means the park could have easily just said, hey, instead of now, instead of canceling the party, but they said they canceled it before uh before the day of the party and they couldn't get in because they couldn't get in contact with Brother Evans. And if that is true, then that's your brother's fault. But the park could have easily now just said, hey. But again, they said they couldn't get in contact with the guy. Well, if they did get in contact with the guy when he got there, they could have told him, hey. We try to get in contact with you, blah, blah, blah. But look at here, our contract is for, it's like it's, it's a lot of kids here, but the contract states only 250 kids to show up. So you better figure out what 250 you want in, but then the rest of them cannot come for the party because that is not what we agreed upon. They could have easily said that. So like I said, like if, 200, so once that first 250 go in, uh, the rest of everybody else have to go home. You see what I'm saying? They could have easily done that, but no, they didn't. They just said they felt uncomfortable. And that's probably why Brother Evans got a, a case or a, le uh, a legitimate reason to be upset because it could have been handled differently. It really could have. Uh, you, like said, you just don't counsel you know what I'm saying? Paul, you just don't cancel stuff. Just all, it's on GP. So they probably was, you know, uh, uncomfortable with all those, with all those, you know, them colored faces coming up in there. But with that being said, hey, man, why don't we just, the easiest way to deal with this is just, you know, make your own, man. I mean, you got $2,000. So that means you got a nice amount of money or you probably saved it. I don't know what you're doing with it. No, as a profession. But you save $200,000 to be able to have a party at somebody park. And I understand about having a party at somebody else's venue. I know my kids was younger. And uh, let's say we have a party at the house with family, people you know, friends, and some people, people don't like to leave for some reason. Yeah, you know, people don't like to leave on time. Maybe they be there all night. So I know like for myself, there was like a, a gathering. Say like for my birthday, I would let, say, hey, bring your kids with you. You know, we'll find something for them to do. You know, but I, for my reason it was, if you bring little kids, after a while, little kids get tired. And the kids either want to go sleep and go home, and there's a good chance that they mom and dad are going to have to take them home. And then once one person start leaving, then more people start leaving. Because they say, what well, you know, people follow monkey, see monkey, do whatever. I call people monkey, but you know, it's just the old saying, but I'm just saying. And it, and it, and it was successful. But then you have people that want to show up when the party's almost over and just get started. So it's like, I would tell friends of mine, you know the best thing to do if you got a lot of people coming, I know you like to have parties of houses and stuff like that, but you can have a party at like a recreation center. 
or some kind of civic center somewhere where people can come and gather and enjoy kids and have fun. And then once it's over, you can leave. And the people let the, you know, you clean up what you're supposed to clean up. You know, you follow the contract, then you can leave. You ain't gotta worry about nobody tearing up your stuff. You know, stealing from you. You know, tearing up, you know, holes in your cow, yard tow up. Uh, mud being tracked through your house. Cause you know, uh, like I said, people stealing your, yeah, you know, stealing, you know, drinking all, eating all your food, eating shit, stuff that they, they, they wasn't even part, ain't part of the party. It's just fine, you know. They find your stash, your alcohol stash, smoking your cigar, stuff like that. Oh, taking your tools, stuff just end up missing, and you don't know who done it. Now you can avoid all that by having a party at somebody else's venue. So I understand, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. But again, as a Black American. And you in, you know, Robert E. Lee City Summit. So you need to uh, just got to create our own. I know it's easier said than done, but it's ways to do it. You see people do uh, GoFundMe and these uh, startup funds all the time on online. So I mean, it could it could be it could, it could be it could be done. You just got to put your mind together. I mean, going back to the whole, remember from the beginning of my earlier story about the uh, civil rights movement, you know, there was a Montgomery bus boycott and all these Negroes, you know, say we're not riding the bus until they allow us to sit where we want to on the bus. And they didn't ride the bus for like a, like almost a year and a half. It was like 17 months, I think. And they was getting harassed, beat up, everything by you know what I'm saying, by those people, by those racist, racist people because they was taking money. That's crazy. People don't want to deal with you, but they want to deal with your money. That was a perfect example of why you need to do your own thing. Your money is very important. Even in politics, y'all, pay attention. I mean, look into that. But white folks are like, yeah, we don't need these black folks riding the bus, but you come to find out black folks are really the main people riding your bus. And the majority of their revenue was being taken, was gone because black folks was walking or, you know, ride sharing each other. But then white folks say, okay, we'll play with y'all. Y'all can come on and, you know, ride the bus. And our people was like, yay, we won. Let's go back and give them folks our money. Them people that don't like us, give them their money. Let's get my money again so they won't go out of business. But you did have a brother who wanted to actually buy buses and make the buses black owned. And he was told, no, nah, that's not what we want. We want to integrate, we want everybody to live in harmony. So we're gonna fight for this. But you could have had your own bus system and making money. Wow, but I'm thinking probably civil rights leaders probably didn't want to make the white man a lot up more upset than what he was. He probably afraid, probably was afraid things, you know, some things were going to happen. But you know, yeah, but I, I can't, I don't understand it. Because look at places like, you know, Tulsa back in the day, you know, back in the early 1900s, they was living pretty good. And I mean, they wasn't nothing, everything wasn't perfect. Yeah, you had your crime, you know, you had your gangsters, your bootleggers, uh, pimps, or prostitutes, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you had it, but it also was, it was a functional city. A functional part of a city. And it's like after that, nobody wants to do it again, man. And that's very, it seems like it's very disheartening. I ain't gonna say nobody. Because there are little cities out there that's trying to, believe it or not, create the same things that they had back in, you know what I'm saying, with the uh, Black Wall Street, they call it. Or you know, or, or the gap, the gap band area. Uh, Greenwood, was it Greenwood Arch and Pine. Uh, people who are trying to do that, which is you know, which is great. Which I believe the way this economy is going, with this inflation and you know, uh, prices are being outrageous. No matter what you get, I think this is is creating a scenario to what we basically are gonna, should be doing in the first place, and that's 
relying on each other because the mother folk, they rely on themselves. They're looking out for themselves. So we got to look out for ourselves too. You Anyway, that's all I got with this story. Hey, I don't know who's in the wrong with this story. You tell me what you think. Could it be racially motivated? Yeah, it could be because again, like I said, the part could have, like I said, easy to just count it out 250 Negroes and told the rest of y'all to go home. They could have easily done that. Uh, but then in two, but they, but when you got a contract, they got you on paper. Once they got you, once they got a contract, they can pretty much say, hey, this is what the contract said. You was in violation with the council. But they gave him a refund. That's another thing. They gave him a refund for what his, his deposit. But they didn't say anything about, hey, let's try to, you know, reschedule. And maybe with better communication, you know, pick out your 250, you know, maybe just do like 250 tickets or reservations. So people come in, if they ain't got a reservation or a ticket, they can't get in. You know, we could work something out to where you can actually have a party here at our great Robert E. Lee Summit. But no, that was not said. They just, hey, we're gonna get your money back. Sorry for the inconvenience. Talk to you later. Very interesting, but you tell me what you think. Leave your comment below and then share it with the world. With that being said, I leave you in peace and I'll see you on the other side.